Welcome to Electron Line. Another way to get a better feel for what a Fourier transform is, is to do a little example. Again, we'll take this familiar by now, a familiar input function. We have a single step function, amplitude a, the pulse width is equal to tau, so it's equally divided across the vertical axis. And we know now what that looks like when we do this graphical transformation of the Fourier transform. But now, we're going to take the equation and actually calculate what this function looks like in the frequency domain. So here we can say that the Fourier transform, so the function in the frequency domain, is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the function f of t multiplied times e to the minus j omega t dt. And remember that j is the square root of negative 1. It's in the complex domain. So when you look at the limits here and you look at your input function, you realize that you don't have to really integrate from minus infinity to infinity because the function is only this wide. So basically it comes down to integrating from minus tau over 2 to plus tau over 2. And the function here is a simple constant amplitude equal to a. So this can now be written as the integral from minus tau over 2 to tau over 2. And we have the function which is a times e to the minus j omega t dt. And of course we know that we can factor out an a, we can pull out that integral sign, but we also have to have the proper differential here. We're going to need a minus j omega dt as the proper differential, so we also have to divide by minus j omega. So we'll do that here. So this is equal to, we still have the a divided by minus j omega times the integral from minus tau over 2 to tau over 2 of e to the minus j omega t times a minus j omega times dt. So I want to show you that that also works when you have a complex number in the exponent. So now we can do the proper integral. So this becomes equal to minus a divided by j omega times e to the minus j omega t evaluated from minus tau over 2 to tau over 2. All right, looks like a mess, but you'll see that it's going to get better. Right, now let's plug in the limits and see what we get. So we end up with this is equal to minus a over j omega times, plug in the upper limit, we get e to the minus j omega tau over 2 minus, when we plug in the lower limit, and that would be e. Notice that this minus, when we plug it in, we'll cancel out that minus. We get e to the plus j omega tau over 2. Make that a little bit bigger, too, there. All right. Now, this is beginning to look a lot like the complex form of the sine. All we need to have in the denominator here is a 2j. And we want to reverse the order. We can do that by using this negative here. So I'm going to need a 2 in the denominator. So I multiply the numerator by 2. And we're going to reverse that by applying this negative sign. So let's see what we get. So this is equal to, uh, that would be positive 2a divided by omega times, so we write this term first and then this term last, e to the j omega tau over 2 minus this term, e to the minus j omega tau over 2, all divided by, and we take the 2j over here. Now we know that this is the complex form of the sine function. Of course, this would be the sine of omega tau over 2. So this becomes 2a divided by omega times the sine of omega tau over 2. Now we realize that we're going to end up with a sinc function, so we're going to try to make this look like a sinc function, which means we need an omega tau divided by 2 in the denominator. All right, let's do that. So we're going to divide, and notice we want the omega over here, so let me rewrite it, so that made it a little cleaner here. So this is equal to, we have the sine of omega tau over 2, and we're going to divide this by omega. Now we already have an omega here, so we'll put it over here. Now we also need a tau, 
So we're going to divide by tau, and we're going to multiply by tau. So we're going to need a tau in the numerator, and we need divide by 2. Now we have a 2 in the numerator, so if we divide by 2, we can pull the 2 down, put it over here. So that's this 2 in the denominator, I guess that's fine. So omega is over here, the 2 is over here. I created tau by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by tau. And finally, I can put the A over here. And this is the Fourier transform of the single pulse input from the time domain. When we do a Fourier transform, we have the appropriate function in the frequency domain. This is the amplitude we have right here at the center, A times tau. We have a sync function, which looks like this. And then if we put the appropriate value in for tau, we can find the exact location where the function crosses over the frequency axis, the horizontal axis. And that's a nice little example to show you how we use the mathematical definition of the Fourier transform and how we can then transform a certain input into the frequency domain. And that's how it's done.